excited to be filming our very first episode today. Finally. Right? Fi- literally, finally. Oh my gosh. It's been a struggle. It really has, but we are dedicated and we're here and we showed up. So today, we're not going to waste any time. We are going to hop right into our origin stories, basically. So you're going to learn a little bit about Destiny. You're going to learn a little bit about me and why we decided to start this podcast together. Yeah. Yeah. So, Destiny, tell us about yourself. Yeah, so I've known since the eighth grade that I wanted to be in the beauty industry. Actually, it's kind of cool. I have this like little note for myself that my eighth grade language arts teacher had us write, and it was like, she had us write a time capsule to herself for graduation, and I wrote in the letter, like, when I graduate from high school, I like want to go to hair school. So kind of like my passion, why I wanted to go to hair school, like, from eighth grade was like, I just grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. And like, I remember being a kid and like people seeing me with my mom and assuming I was adopted because like they had never seen like a biracial child before. And that definitely like it got better as I got older. But like as a little kid, when like you're totally different and like your hair is super curly and all your friends have like straight blonde hair, like you're just kind of like, "Mm, I don't really feel like I fit in here. So on top of that and like all the other insecurities that I had I just never loved my hair. Like, I was just never, like, happy with it. But it was, like, once I finally figured out, like, how to do it and, like, really, you know, work with my curls or blowing it out or whatever I was doing, it just brought so much confidence to me that I was, like, I want everyone to feel this way. Like, I never want anybody to, like, feel insecure about themselves because of their hair. So that's kind of, like, where my passion came from. When I graduated from high school, I actually didn't start at hair school. My parents had pretty much encouraged me to, you know, go get a degree because their generation, like, that's what she did. So I did it. I literally went to school for a semester. I did the whole thing, like, (laughs) joined a sorority, lived on campus, and I freaking hated it so much. And, like, (laughs) after a semester, I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm not doing that. So I went back home. And was going to enroll out of VEDA. At this time, I was living in Ohio. But they didn't have any openings for like an entire year. So I was like, okay. So I just started working. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to work and we'll figure it out. So within that time of me kind of like working, my parents actually decided to move to Florida. And I'm the oldest of six kids. And four of them were still like at home, like in elementary and middle school. And so my mom told me, hey, there's literally an Aveda 30 minutes away from like the house that we're moving to. And that was actually a way shorter commute than I was going to have like in Ohio. I was going to have to drive like an hour and a half to my school in Ohio. So I definitely did not want to stay in Ohio. Like no offense to like people who are still in my town, but like I just did not fit in. Like it's just like time warped. Like every time I go back home, I'm just like, "Mm, this is just not where I belong. Like (laughs) this, this is just not for me. Yeah. Everybody has their place. Yeah. So I'm like, it was the perfect opportunity for me to move. So I moved here literally two weeks after I moved here, I was in school. Like everyone thought I was crazy. They're like, I'm sorry, you just moved here from Ohio and you're going to school. And I'm like, you don't understand. Like when you've been wanting to do this since you were in eighth grade school, two months. No, no, no. Two weeks after I moved to... Two weeks. Two weeks after I moved Girl, to Florida, I was in jumps. school. Like, enrolled in going to class. Wow. Yeah. Like, like boxes aren't even unpacked, and That's I'm, like, in school. Dedication. Yeah, girl. I was ready. Mm-hmm. I mean, since the eighth grade, I wanted to do this, yeah. you know? And then it was, like, just this waiting game, and it was, like, you know, some call, of a, call it a coincidence, and, you know, I call it God. Like, he knew where I was supposed to be, when I was supposed to start. So it's, like, as much as I could be, like, oh, I, you know, didn't get to start right out of high school. It's, like, there was a reason why, you know, I didn't start until I got to Florida. So school, as you know, is, you know, 13 months long. The beginning of school, like probably about the first 10 months, I worked at Sephora because I was actually super interested in doing makeup more so than hair. And so I was working at Sephora. And then about three months left, I was hired by a salon and I was like assisting and like doing front desk there. And when I graduated, I was actually asked personally by Aveda to become a makeup educator for them, which I was like super honored by and I did it. I shortly learned like working for a corporate wasn't for me at all. I did get some cool opportunities. Like I got to work with their creative director and I got to go to St. Pete and do training. And right before I left, it actually asked me to go to New York Fashion Week with her. But I just, I'm not someone to like be controlled by a company. And I was just like, 
wanting to like focus on like building my books and I was getting busy behind the chair, my love for makeup was like kind of starting to diminish a little bit. And I was like, I just think I want to focus on like something that I have like full control over, you know, like who sits in my chair? I have control over that. And I just like felt like I got to, you know, meet those clients more personally because it wasn't just like doing makeup for an event. It was, you know, fully making people feel beautiful, which was always my passion. So I decided to just stay behind the chair. And during that time, I just needed more growth. So I actually moved to a bigger salon and started to kind of manage there and, you know, brought a lot of cool ideas to the salon to just help them grow. So from the beginning, like both salons, I've always been kind of like managing and like doing behind the scenes and all of that really helped me out. And in 2018, I decided to go out on my own. So I got pregnant. And I was like, the salon culture in life, if you know, you know, Mm. is not for me. Like, Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't be at the salon till 10 o'clock at night dealing with, you know, seeing 10 clients a day, not getting a break, having to deal with like unnecessary drama. Like, I was just like, I can't do it. So I started my own salon suite in 2018 with literally no knowledge, no mentors. Like, I was just like, F it. We're going. <laughs> We're going to do it. We're going to do this. My amazing husband was very, very supportive of me. And I mean, I remember like sitting on the couch, literally calculating like, okay, these clients are coming in. Like, this is how much I'm going to make. Okay, I can pay my rent. Okay, so um, you need to do Uber so that we can like pay the light. Like, it was pretty tough in the beginning. It was like crunching numbers, but you know, it's what I wanted to do. So I you know, of course, like overcame that I started taking like education and just like really investing into my business and myself. I actually went extension exclusive and I went into a double suite. So I like expanded my business bigger. In 2021, my business hit six figures. I was able to work three days a week. I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, nine to five. So I don't work weekends or evenings anymore. And it's like, just see. So wait, (laughs) you need to pause. Destiny works three days a week. Yes. And is a six figure stylist. Yeah. Which if you would have told me that when I like first graduated school, I'd be like, okay, well, that's what we're told. Yeah. No, is that it can't happen for sure. And hustle culture for sure. I hired a business coach in 2021 and literally changed my life because she just like, she showed me a side that I never knew was possible. And like, I, that's what we want to do. You know, like we want to like change the mindset, change the standards of the industry to show you like, you literally can do whatever you want. I remember going to hair school thinking like, oh, if I want to be a successful stylist, like I have to be a celebrity artist. Like I'm going to, that's what I, I have that to too. do. Yeah. yeah. Like that was my dream. And now I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally only behind the chair three days a week. I see about two to three clients a day. I have boundaries. They respect me. I just got a a text from a client today and she's like, I know you're off today. I'm so sorry to text you. And it's like, I've just created this like amazing business for myself where I can do what I love and like not come home. Like, why did I do this? Like, this is, you know, I regret doing this. Like, this is such a waste of time. And it's just, it's been such an amazing journey. And I'm so excited that we both like, it's so funny. Like we have very different but similar backgrounds like I feel like our like core is the same but we kind of took like different like paths and like you know they they've met up together and we've both just been able to give each other like so much insight because it's like the things that I thrive in are different than the things that you thrive in so it's like it's great because we can both like you know like meet each other like I'll call you out about stuff and then you'll call me out about stuff and it's (laughs) like oh yeah like you're right you know so Yeah, that's kind of my journey. And, you know, throughout that journey, me and Sierra started working together in 2018, actually when I was pregnant, but we didn't really get close until like COVID. Yeah. Like COVID, we were just like, I mean, like we had nothing else to do. It was lockdown <laughs> and we both, so in, we live in Florida. So during lockdown, I remember they were like, these two months, it's basically illegal to do your job. Yeah. Like salons yeah. are shut down. Like anything beauty is a no. And we were both like, girl, what are we going to do? Yeah. Like, and this, we just started, I think we just started texting. Yeah. I don't even know what I happened. don't either. Like, I we just really became don't. literally like attached at the hip. Yeah. I used to do weddings and that's how I met Sierra. I'm mm-hmm. um, doing that. 
And I think one of the things that like really connected us, like number one, we were both like the only biracial girls like on the team at the time. Yeah. And then which we were both used to usually being the only biracial yeah. girl. Yeah. And <sighs> then this is so funny, but we both found out that we would spray rose water we did on our yeah. blenders and to then, like, like <laughs> wait you do that pop better yes and then we realized that we have like basically the same same like, like routine setup for yeah. makeup <laughs> yeah and i feel like that's when we were starting like oh wait like this we're... girl is on yeah exactly <laughs> and i do i do not remember like the exact moment that it was just like where it clicked yeah yeah it's weird it's so weird it's like felt like it's just meant to be that way yeah seriously mm-hmm. it was just so natural like nothing was ever like forced or anything like that mm-hmm. but yeah that's my story so what about you so a little about me our origins yeah like you mentioned they are pretty much the same which yeah. is really weird we both realized we didn't come from like really stable beginnings yeah i'm also biracial i also have curly hair if you're watching this on a video like curls are out today but yeah i basically was a military child. I had a single mom. So I was born in Hawaii. I moved to Virginia and then I moved to Washington, D.C. And we actually realized that we were both in Washington, D.C. when 9-11 happened. Yeah, but that was I was, wild. Yeah, I was living in D.C. at the time and I was going to school around Capitol Hill and all of that happened. It was crazy. We just realized we were both like our paths crossed like a yeah. lot. Yeah, Way I just before. got chills. Right, it's just crazy. <laughs> like when I tell you guys like – meant to be like we were supposed to meet yeah this was destined to happen but so moved from dc to like jacksonville and then because i have a single mom every time she got deployed i would get sent back to go live with my cousins and everybody so from that happening i would actually get like literally six months of schoolwork at a time and because of that i learned that school is basically a waste of time for me (laughs) like i was like okay wait so you're telling me that I can do like a whole month's worth of work in a week and a half and then I'm still supposed to just sit in class. Yeah. So it was a really hard struggle for me like literally all the way through high school. Like I hated school the whole time, the whole way through. I wasn't bad at school. I was always on honor roll. I always was like excelling and things like that. I never had school spirit at any school I went to because I was always at different schools. So to Mm -hmm. me, school spirit was kind of like pointless. I was like, why aren't we just people supporting people? It doesn't make sense. It, like it's school, weird. Schools are very political. Yeah, and that's, that's and I the saw kind of, it. That's the kind of Especially town I grew up in. in. DC, like yeah, yes. you see it. I realized that you know school just was a waste of time. And I, from a young age, I was like, how can we make this process better? So by the time I got all the way through high school, I had had a little sister at the age of eleven. She was born, and then my mom fell ill because of that quite a few times, and. It kind of forced me to grow up. So my sister was born when I was 11 years old. And then um, my mom actually almost died on the table. She bled out. And I overheard it because the doctor tried to pull my mom's friend who was in the military away because she wasn't supposed to go into labor the day she did. So I literally was in the car with her and she drove herself while in labor. And we got there and she was pushing and nothing was happening. And it was like it was it was honestly like I'm scarred permanently yeah, from that, like especially being a childbirth kid. yeah so when my mom bled out on the table and I overheard it they were basically like okay she might not make it and from that second something clicked in me I saw my little sister and I was like I am now all she has and I am all I have that's a lot I was 11 kid. yeah but I remember it's just the feeling of looking at this like little defenseless baby who just came into the world and I immediately was protective I immediately mm-hmm. was like this is like us against the world like it was crazy and then she would get better and then she would get sick again and then like all these things my mom is basically like almost passed away in my life like eight times like literally I'm not even exaggerating like they told us she was going to die that many times due to complications from this birth wow yeah so that has made me grow up really fast. So I didn't really have like a an origin where you did, where you were like, I've known since I was a baby yeah. that I wanted to do hair. Mine was more so like I was looking at colleges in South Florida, going back to Hawaii. Like I was looking at doing all these things for universities. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go to school for marketing or business. And then my mom got sick again. And I was like, I can't leave. Yeah, I can't go that far. And then the first thing in my brain was how am I going to be able to provide for my sister and me and keep a roof over our heads when like my mom ends up in the hospital again because this is happening right now. It just made me grow up really fast. 
But as I was graduating high school, I started looking into cosmetology schools because I was just naturally good at doing hair and makeup. And I was like in modeling. I had done dance my whole life from like two to 18. I don't know how she kept that up now that I'm thinking about it, but like kudos to that woman. (laughs) Because uh, dance for children is expensive. Yeah. So I don't know. I was just like, what am I naturally good at that I could turn into a trade that will then turn into money? Yeah. And I was like, oh, what is this? Cosmetology school? The fact that you had to think about that at like 18 years old is yeah. like insane. Really? To me, it's just normal. Like, it's just that's what happened. To me. Yeah. But you had been thinking about it since 11. So for you, you're like, oh, my God, I'm 18. Why do I not have like a career yet? <laughs> Yeah. You had been thinking about it since you were 11. Yeah. Well, you know what's crazy too is as I was in like an AP, I was always in arts. So I was in an AP art class and my teacher at the time, she was amazing. I loved her. She was so sweet. But when I told her I was going to go to cosmetology school, this woman was like, why are you going to do that? Don't do that. Not even her. It wasn't even just her. It was a lot. Every, almost every teacher I had was like, don't do that. You're not going to make money. You're not going to be okay. Like just go to regular college. You're going to throw your life away. And I don't know what it was, but there was something in the back of my mind and it was like, don't listen to these people. Yeah. Just don't. You know, do what it, you need your, to do. It, it's it's the stubbornness, like, oh, F you. you yeah. Say I can't do this. And I'm I remember do I was just like, okay, well, better. you don't have to be proud of me, but yeah. I'm gonna do this. Right. And like you're not you you don't need to pay these bills. And me being I hope you're listening to this class. podcast right now. Okay. <laughs> but I decided to go to school. And I thought I was originally going to go to school with my mom's GI Bill. And then we found out that I happened to be in the one year that there was like a gap. So I couldn't use it. Shut up. So right as I had signed up for classes, it was crazy. You said two weeks because I waited two months from the day I graduated to start school. So I wait from high school. Yes. Wait, I did not know you started hair school that soon after high school. Yeah. Two months. Oh, dang. Two months. So I was looking at all So you've had your cosmetology license for a minute. Yeah. I did not realize that. Since I was like 19, 18, 19. Yeah, I did not realize that. Yeah, since 2014. And I graduated high school 2013. Okay. But I was looking at all the schools and I was looking at like the state colleges, blah, 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 da, 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 all the things. And then, you know, the advertisements of like all the universities and like the universities of like cosmetology is like Aveda. Right. So. The Yale of cosmetology school is Aveda. Yeah. So you're Aveda. I'm Aveda. We went to Aveda. The cult. The cult. (laughs) Yes. So I joined the cult. (laughs) And <laughs> Jane, out of Vina, it's a for the world we live in. It is a little cultish. It is. But I still loved what they stood for. No, I do too. At the end and of the day. And it's a lot of my business like is Same. behind that. Yeah. Like client like, experience. Like, yeah. Like, and yeah. like wellness and yeah. all the things. So went to Aveda and found out like a few days before I was supposed to start my classes. They were like, Haha, you have no money. And I was like, oh my God. So then I had to quickly research and learn about loans and figuring out how to get approved for loans and blah, 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 and da, 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 and all that stuff. And then I figured it all out and got approved. And uh, my mom got sick again while I was in school. And I was like having to balance school, two or three jobs. And my sister figured that out, got through it. And then I went into my first salon job at one of the top salons in Jacksonville, who shall not be named. And it was a literal hellhole. I most of them are was like mentally abused. And then, oh, side note: so many salons think that these girls who come out of cosmetology school don't know anything. And honestly, I didn't. Like, I was green. Like, I was. And you're just like you're so eager and willing. You're gracious. And yeah, Yeah. you're just like everything is amazing, girl. I had to go to my boss and be like, "You're not even paying me minimum wage, and that's legal." And they would be like, this is what minimum wage was. And I was like, no, actually, it's not. And this is where it says it on the state website. Like, this is not okay. <laughs> so Crazy. they had to adjust that and stuff happened. But I was being, like, screamed at, yelled at. Like, there was, like, conversations about, like, gay people in the back room. There was conversations about my color. There were conversations about my hair. There was conversations about me not wearing enough makeup or looking a certain way. No. which kind of just all went back into it. And I was like, I did this to make people feel beautiful. And all I'm doing is literally going into work every day feeling like I don't measure up right. at all. Like I don't fit in. I didn't fit in at yeah. all. Like I, I, I did not. Yeah. And it was clear and it was made obvious and it was like told to me yeah. that I did not fit. So I actually tried to quit that job. And then they told me that they were actually going to give me a promotion 
so that I stayed. This is toxic. If you're just getting into the cosmetology industry, they will play mind games with you. So if you are new to the beauty industry and you're going into a salon, do not undervalue yourself and like definitely make sure that they at least treat you with respect and like you're a human being. Yeah. Like I'm not saying be entitled or anything like that. Like there, there's still so much to learn and there's sure. still so much to grow from, but like just make sure they treat you like a person yeah. and they don't diminish you and rip you down because the hazing culture yeah. is, is real. Real. Yeah. Real, really real. real. <laughs> so I tried to quit. They told me I was going to get a promotion, played mind games with me. And then one day the boss was like, Sierra. And I was like running across the salon. And then she like literally threw a towel with bleach on it at me. And then I like grabbed the stuff and went to do the laundry and she had like screamed at me again and she started literally talking crap about me to her client loud enough for everyone in the salon to hear. The salon was huge, huge. I know it's one of this. Multiple floors, like floor spaces, yeah. not like yeah, yeah, yeah. levels. Yeah. So anyways, loud enough for everyone to hear and like something hit me and I was like, listen, girl. Like, I am a nice little Jacksonvillean girl to some people, but, like, I lived in D.C., I come okay? From the hood. Don't, like, right. I was like, I'm not from the hood, okay? Yeah, yeah. My mother, we lived on base, right? But, like, no, like I was inner city child. Like, right. I had to fight to, like, make it. Right. So, I was like, this is what we're not going to do. Because at this point, like, you are obviously this disrespecting. This is what we're not going to do. Literally. <laughs> and, like, I slammed the, like, dryer shut, and I was like, I'm done. And she was like, you're fired. And I was like, I don't give up. Like, Maybe. I literally walked up to her husband and I was like, so remember that talk we had? Yeah. That's it. She said, come back. And then he tried to call me and he was like, so uh, by the way, we just don't need you to come back in. And I was like, I was never coming back in. <sighs> I almost said his name. <laughs> but anyways, so that happened. And then I took literally six months off and I was like, I'm not doing this again. Yeah. I'm not doing this. And make sure that you're smart with your money. Like, plan your finances, save money. Like, when someone else controls what you make, yeah, you, you think you're, you're safe, but more. you're not safe. So, thank God I was, like, stashing away money like a little, like, squirrel. As you still do. Oh, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> but that That's gave another me, episode. Yeah, that gave me the opportunity to, like, sit there for six months sure. and be like, I don't. Like, I was going to interviews and I was like, screw this. I'm interviewing you. Yeah. Like, if you're going to be abusive like that. Yeah. I'm not going to work for you. Right. So I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and I'm going to work at Ulta because they give you a chair immediately. And I've already assisted for this long and I'm done. I don't yeah. care. So I went in Ulta and then I was doing makeup in Ulta. I was doing hairstyling in Ulta. I had a fully booked. Yeah. yeah. But it was of blondes and these girls who were coming in with the, you remember Chris Lee Knows Best? Mm -hmm. Do you remember Savannah? When she got the bob. Yes. I was doing that bob. I did that bob on one girl. Stop. And she I went, did bobs all the time too. She went around and like told That's everyone so my funny. name. She, like everyone was asking her where she got her hair done. And she filled my book. Like that I, That girl was super sweet. But it was that and blondes. And then I had the same feeling. I was like, this is not for me. My body's breaking down already. Yeah. Like I can't. Like I'm also hypoglycemic. So I have to eat. Mm -hmm. There is no like discussion about like yeah. maybe we don't eat. It was like I'm about to pass out every single Saturday. Yeah. So Sunday was literally just me recovering, like trying not to like feel like complete ass and like not puke my brains out. So yeah, it wasn't toxic work life. Yeah, it wasn't working for me. So uh, one of my friends that I met, she actually has become like a big sister to me. I still love her. Shout out Kristen. And she came back for me after she had her baby. And she was like, do you want to work for Armani and YSL and travel to LA? And I was like, wait yeah <laughs> right i literally was just like wait what and she was like bitch pack your shit let's go so i did it and i went and i just like followed god yeah. for me at that point i was just like it doesn't seem like the right idea but like i'm gonna do it so i went out to la and i trained with georgia armani and ysl and i loved working for them and for, with them i learned a yeah. true luxurious experience and that was really amazing it was eye-opening and also getting flown to LA, all expenses paid and staying at five star resorts is pretty great. Literally. It's pretty great. They really treat you good. <laughs> but then I was coming back and I was working with Dillard's too. So that was like not off cough. Great. Yeah. Cough. <laughs> if you know, you know. 
So that wasn't the best for me. And I had a girl come in and I matched her assistant without touching her at all. Like I was just like, you're 6.25. And then she was like, what? And I was like, that's your color. Put it on. I'm telling you. And nobody would give this girl the time of day at all. So she was actually transgender and she was Mexican Mm -hmm. and no one would talk to her. And she had this little Georgia accent and it was so freaking cute. I mean, it's Dullard's. Right. Cough, cough. Anyways, so no one would talk to her. Like she went through the whole counter. She was literally approaching these people and no one would, they were, they were pretending she wasn't there. And so when she came up to me, I was like, I don't remember if I said 6.5 or 6.25, maybe 6.75, whatever. Irrelevant. I said the shade she was. She put it on. She was floored. She was like, how did you do that? And I was like, I got you. And then she went and got her boss and her boss was like, oh my gosh, you helped my little baby, blah, blah, blah. And she was like this Southern, like imagine like glam Barbie Southern Belle. That's who came up to me. She's like, you helped my baby? And I was like, yes. And then we exchanged numbers. I helped her with all of her stuff the rest of the night, stayed late for her, got all her stuff together. And like, then she randomly gave me a call and she's like, do you want to do my makeup and hair for the Emmys? And I was like, what? <laughs> and then everybody was like, it's a scam, Sierra. Don't Am I do it. Be abducted. <laughs> yeah, everybody's like, you're going to get trafficked and blah, blah, blah. And the girl who's like my big sister who got me the job for Armani and YSL was like, don't do it. It's, she could be scamming you. You could disappear. And I was like, no, nah, I got a good feeling. <laughs> it's a vibe. And then they started just like really getting abusive there, like with like the work culture. Like I pulled off, I think, an $8,000 event for them in one day. Mm-hmm. And then they were like you need to call everybody in your CAD and you need to like get these sales in and blah, blah, blah. But and I don't like, want to pay you more. Yeah. And I was like, you guys were just telling me that I'm like the Messiah because I made this event happen. And it's literally been like less than a week. And now you're telling me that you might fire me because my mom got sick again. And I was in the hospital with her. And I remember they texted me and they were like, oh, well, if you can't come in for this event, then we're going to have to find someone to replace you as manager. Because at this point I was like 22 and I was the manager of like the thing. And I was like, oh, you're going to replace me after I just pulled off an $8,000 event for you. And I was like, that's okay. That's fine. This is my two weeks effective now. And I faxed it and I was in the hospital. Like, that's what I was just like, realistically, I was like, family, mom, life. Yeah. This BS. Right. Now I'm good. So again, savings. Right. Savings. (laughs) So uh, my mom somehow miraculously got better just in time for... My dad to watch my sister for a bit while I flew over to L.A. and did hair and makeup for her for the Emmys. And I went to the Emmys. It was crazy. Yeah. I was at the red carpet. I got to see, like, Mario Lopez and, like, all of them. It was really cool. It was a really fun experience. And then I came back here and I worked for her exclusively as, like, her stylist for, I don't even know, a couple years. And that's – I still was doing blondings. So I did her hair, did her makeup. I, I was literally airbrushing this girl's whole body. <laughs> like, everything. So I did that. And then I started doing wedding hair and makeup. And then I started doing production hair and makeup. Like, CBS, CNN. Yeah, you've got to do a lot of, like, really cool ESPN. Yeah. Stuff. So I did all that. And then – I started doing lashes, and then you're the one who pushed me to go get my lash certification. Mm-hmm. Now I have a lash. Y'all, video. we were literally in COVID. Oh, I forgot on I did her business couch. school too. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot I went to business school and got my degree. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I did that while I was doing. We're we're so bad at like whoa, acknowledging the great things that we've done for ourselves. Yeah, but I think a lot of women are. Yeah. I think we just like hustle, take care of everybody. You're on the go and you're just like, that's it. I think while I was working for Armani and YSL is when I started going to school. And then I finished in 2020 is when I graduated. So I was like on the president's list the whole time I was in school too. Yeah. I worked real hard. Yeah. And now you have your lash company. Yeah. And you have your own studio. Mm -hmm. and But I didn't even think I was going to have a lash company. You had been talking about wanting to do lashes at weddings and you were going to take a class. And I was like, oh, I I did lashes before. I could just teach you. You did say that. And then I had like come over, like we were talking about lashes and then I had like come over to like teach you. Was this one of the first times we hung out was like I was, my head was in your lap? Because I remember my head was in your lap. This girl was crisscross applesauce on my couch. 
couch and my God. eyes, like, I was, like, chilling in her lap, eyes <laughs> taped shut, like, tweezers to my face. Like, it was chest from the start. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes. I think that is kind of how – it was, like, lashes. That's how we kind of, like, started. Wow. Yeah, because yeah. I was freelancing – with hair and makeup, and then I was also freelancing with, like, the big beauty brands in yeah. stores and Sephora and Ulta. Yeah. And I was supposed to go corporate with them. And then COVID happened, and the world shut down, and then I was about to graduate, and I had jobs lined up, and then all of that hit the bed. Yeah. Yeah. And then but you're like, lashes! look now. Yep. Yeah. And you're so good at them, and you. you got your own little studio, you have your, like, retail going. Yeah, and the lash company. The yeah. Brand. Yeah. We got brands now. Yes, with doing I love the it. thing, but uh, that's kind of all encompassing of who we are. Yeah, but also like that. Just even just those the beginning to like where we are now is why we started this. And yeah, and I think just through conversation that we both have, we both have just struggled so much like starting our businesses and like number one trying to find people who like genuinely want to see you succeed I feel like a lot of people like in my personal experience are like yeah like if you need help with something let me know but then like when it comes time like asking questions they're bothered they're bothered or they give you like the most generic yes, basic response exactly and like okay and then but you like feel how like, crap right and, and yeah. so we're just like you know what like there is literally enough for all of us out here and like we have both helped each other in like different ways with building our businesses mm-hmm. and like really been a support for each other like mm-hmm. I mean there's been long nights there's been cries you know there's yeah, been intense conversations the <laughs> like and it's just like we want to be we want to be that support so that like it doesn't feel hard because I'm like I feel like when you get past that like little hump mm-hmm. like it's good and even the simple things like us freaking googling like how to get a salon license like there it's just not really out there like there's no one really out there like helping and like mentoring you yeah know? from what we can find giving like genuine and like also like valuable education yeah like a lot of the things that i learned you can find school. stuff but like she said it's just like it's just simple and it's just like vague yeah. and you're just like okay like that didn't really help me or it's just not out there at all yeah so we started this to basically create a community to help other people in the industry and to make you feel like it doesn't matter how you show up with us. It doesn't yeah. matter who you are, what your background is, what your your ethnicity, you know, your sexual orientation. None of that matters to yeah. us. What matters to us is that we are here for each other and, and we're that, here for you. Yeah, and that you're doing what you love. Yeah, and – We're tired we of just, the standards. We're tired of like – you know the toxic salon culture we're tired of the hustle culture like we're tired of pretending to be someone we're not all the time because it's exhausting you forget, don't have a real job you literally forget who you are though yeah. like i had a moment in time where i last year i did my taxes you guys i realized i worked every day of the year except for like 10 days yeah that's ridiculous yeah it is like i became a shell of a human being just putting on this show yeah for what? Right. I lost a whole year of my right. life. Exactly. It's not yeah. It. So we're we're excited to do all of this and we really, you know, we just want to give value back into our community and just really create that support for everybody out there so that we can all thrive out here and we can all do amazing things. And so that in the future, when people, when you say I'm a hairstylist or I do lashes or whatever it is in the beauty industry, I'm a boutique owner, like you can say it proudly and not feel like you have to like justify that like you are successful and you know what you're doing, you know? I love that. I do too. Well, we are going to head out of here and we're so thankful for the community that we've already built. You can check us back here bi-weekly. We'll be posting Mm -hmm. and we will see you soon. Bye, Bye, BBs. BBs. Thanks for being our blended babe, aka BBs. Join the conversation and let your voice be heard. If you're ready for a revolution, don't forget to leave us a review wherever you're listening and follow the journey on Instagram at blended underscore podcast. Share this episode with your BB who is ready to beautify the beauty industry and rewrite the standards. Get all the tea from this episode and more in the show notes. Bye. Bye.